14 points. We associate Reggie Miller with a three-point line, but he starts out the game going to the basket, gets fouled, and goes to the line. Again, taking it to the hole, converting for a two. But so we don't forget about him. He does get behind the three-point line to knock one down. Six for 10, 14 points, 10 attempts already in the first quarter. Remember, last game, Reggie Miller only had nine shots for the entire game after having 27 field goal attempts in game number three. As the second quarter gets underway, Jalen Rose tried to squeeze his way through a triple team. And result, a turnover, Milwaukee in possession. Thomas over McKee. Tim Thomas continues to show the touch. And the Bucks lead by seven. Sam Perkins has come on for the first time. So Perkins, Rose, McKee, Crozier, and Best on the floor. Here's Travis Best. Rebound, Thomas. Now, Thomas is, is a tough guard. He really is. You saw early on when he came in the game, he went by McKee, dropped it off for a layup to his teammate. That time, McKee gives him a half a step off, keeps the jumper in his face. Thomas again with the pullback. Yes! And that time he wanted to show us that he could dribble it and pull up his shoe. He's giving us a little bit of everything right now. Jim Thomas has had a sensational series against the Pacers. 8-0 run for Milwaukee, all by the bench. Perkins for three. Got the roll. Well, they need somebody to come out and give them a lift off this Pacer bench. And maybe it's Perkins who can get back there behind the three-point line, spread him out a little bit. That'll open some things up for his teammates down low, hopefully. Fernando's had a very quiet series. He's not been getting the minutes. Del Negro with the step. Del Negro. The extraordinary buck shooting continues. In particular by the bench player. I think Vinny Del Negro likes the rims here. <laughs> he likes something about this city, the way he's been shooting. Two minutes gone by in the second quarter. Bucks have an eight-point advantage. Shot clock at five. Crozier. Perkins for three. Thomas is on it. George Carlin has Del Negro and Allen at the guard with Johnson, Ham, and Thomas up front. George Carlin had a, a kind of interesting description of his team as Del Negro penetrates over to Gordon Ham, who goes to the basket and is fouled. Described his team as not necessarily a fast breaking team, but we're a quick shot team, he said. And that has certainly been the case in this series against the Pacers. Crozier called for the foul. Timeout taken with nine and a half to go in the first half. It doesn't bother me. I mean, if that's what he wants to do, then let him do it. I, I'm, I'm not going to back down and be scared of anything. You know, I'm not going to stop playing the way I'm, 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 I'm playing now. So, uh, we can do whatever. It's, that's just the way it is. Do whatever he wants. If it happens, it happens. Well, things did uh, get a little testy uh, last night between the Jazz and the Sonics. Carmelo and the Jazz looking to bounce back tomorrow night on TNT. It will be a doubleheader beginning at 8 o'clock as the Game 5 matchup festival continues, all starting tonight and uh, moving on to tomorrow. And the first of two, the Sonics and the Jazz, and then game five between the Sacramento Kings and the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm not sure all the coaches would agree with me on this, but it's great to have all these game fives, isn't it? It's a terrific run over this 24-hour period, and Sam Cassell continues the terrific shooting for the Bucks. Milwaukee has hit seven of its last eight from the field, and now lead by ten. Perkins draws the double. Crowd beginning to, uh, you can hear, as McKee is able to hit out of the scoop, you can hear the murmuring, like, what's going on here? Well, they saw the shot clock coming down. It was like a little inside, a little outside, a little inside passing taking place, and the crowd suddenly is going, um, gang, we need to get something going here. Well, Metro. And with the hustle and the save. Well, they get the new shot clock. Thomas going at Perkins. Tim Thomas. Nice touch by hand. Scott Williams has checked in for the first time. What a series it's been for Scott Williams. In game two, he was 7 of 11 for 15 points. And he said, you know, it's the best 
That's the best I've played. And then in game four, Milwaukee the other night, nine for 13. 20 points, eight rebounds, and he surpassed what he did here in game two. Well, we kind of teased him after game two. We asked if he had turned into strictly a jump shooter, and he comes back and has a tremendous game in game four. Austin Crozier bringing the Pacers with him six, and the crowd getting back into it. Four minutes gone by in the second quarter. Robinson. Williams back out to pick dog Robinson. Rose is trying to draw the foul. Here comes Best. Rose put it behind the ball. Well, something had to get the crowd going. Jalen Rose with the terrific move in transition. And George Carl doesn't want the crowd to get too much into the game. Tries to stop it right away. Best saw immediately on the outlet pass they had numbers. He kicks it ahead to Rosen as the defensive player Del Nago tries for the swipe. We get the behind the back conversion. The place is up on its feet. More in the national news, national covers a lot, a lot more than I have in the past. And hopefully, you know, we're starting to gain that recognition throughout the world because it is a global game now. So. You know, we still have a lot more ground to cover, but at the same time, we know that, you know, the team isn't, you know, the people aren't going to just look past us. And I don't have to walk around all summer and tell people where Milwaukee is. Well, this is a Milwaukee team that went 42 and 40 in the regular season. At one point, lost a franchise record seven straight at home. At one point, lost 15 of 20 and squeaked in the number eight spot, beating out Orlando to make the playoffs. And they are giving the Indiana Pacers a run. The number one seed Pacers having their difficulty in this series. Indiana showing some signs off that last move by Jalen Rose. They're now with him four. But Milwaukee has come out and shot extremely well once again in the first half. Thomas and a loose ball foul. Call us that well, just, just to show you how well Milwaukee is shooting the basketball for the season. Milwaukee is the number three team in the NBA, shooting just over 46%. For the last three games, they're at 50%. And again, tonight, over 58% at this point in the game. They have just been on a roll for the last three games, and Indiana's catching them at some time right now. And the Bucs not only shooting well, they have turned it over just once thus far. Coming up on seven minutes remaining in this first half, Reggie Miller back on the floor. Here's Crozier. Rebounded by Williams. Not the best shot there. Not the highest percentage shot. Crozier rushed it a little bit that time. They could have gotten a better, higher percentage shot. Now there's Best. Looking to set it up. Best and Miller in the backcourt. Crozier with Perkins and Rose on the front line. And again, Crozier. Coming up short, and you can see Larry Bird turn and discuss. You have a 6'10 player being played by a guard. Take your time, get him down low enough to either you can commit to a double team or you overpower the guy. Instead, you wind up falling away. You make yourself really a smaller player with the fadeaway. Miller wrestling for position with Cassell and a foul on Cassell. Miller was able to get the step. That's the second committed by. Sam Cassell. A little screen, a switch, and now watch as Reggie Miller catches Cassell on his back. They'll go back to the top of the circle. Cassell on his back. Miller's foul. Ray Allen back on the floor, coming out for Vinny Del Negro. Dunk block at five. Best unleashing. Closer not able to handle. Robinson does. Closure had it in his hands that time. Only one hit on the ball. Dropped it. As a result, Milwaukee comes up with it. Bucks with the ball. And a four-point lead. Robinson. And both clubs in the midst of a drop. That's a mini shooting slump. You missed like two or three shots. It's a slump. Closure. And played by Thomas. And Crozier missing his last three. Cassell. Cut off by Best. And the offensive foul 
ball is drawn by Miller. A nice job that time by Reggie of acting as Robinson spun into him. Obviously, Robinson bigger, stronger. Reggie knows he's in trouble, so instead he tries it. Here's the little lean in. Oh, the flop by Reggie gets the call. And a pivotal foul. It's number three on Robinson. He'll sit down. Ham returns. Dale Davis is back for the Pacers. Bucks now scoreless over the last four minutes. Most unusual for the Bucks this series. Rose, Joe Crawford. I think he's going to get it. Yeah, he gets the offensive foul the other way. Joe wanted to take a long look. He was, he was checking across the floor with his partner on the floor, making sure they both had the same call before, before he went ahead and gave the signal. Alan Rose called for his second. And the Milwaukee Bucks trying to become only the third number eight seed to upset a number one since the playoffs expanded to 16 teams back in 1984. Thomas has gone cold. Denver did it to Seattle in 1994. Knicks beat the Heat last year, both winning on the road. Here comes Cassell. Cassell. That was not the shot that George Carl had in mind. And a foul. Foul on Thomas and the Bucks. Who began the game 16 for 23 and now one for the last 12. You're right. It wasn't the shot that George wanted. It wasn't really the shot that Cassell wanted either. I think he was hoping to get the defensive player up in the air, step underneath him. He lands on him, gets to the foul line. It didn't happen. Bess not able to hit for three. Seconds remaining in the first half. After this little stretch of misses, you have both teams down in the 40% area shooting the basketball. Milwaukee with a four point lead. These two clubs have been stuck at 38 34. Allen over best. And here comes Best, ripping by a couple of bucks, setting it up for Miller. And a foul. Committed by Thomas. That's his second. Twenty-second timeout is called by Larry Bird. You're seeing more transition opportunities right now because of the missed shots by Milwaukee and doing a decent job rebounding the basketball. Indiana has been out, able to capitalize on a couple of these transition opportunities. A reminder, Saturday on NBC, the Philadelphia 76ers await the winner of tonight's game between the Bucks and the Pacers. Coverage beginning 3 o'clock Eastern time with NBA Showtime. 76ers eliminating the Charlotte Hornets this past Monday night. They're just waiting on the wings, and now they've changed it to a full timeout, so we will take our normal break with 357 left in the first half. To Indianapolis, Indiana, the Bucks with a four-point lead on the Pacers. NBA Commissioner David Stern touring the playoffs, receiving the extensive tour of Conseco Fieldhouse. This is his first visit, we're told. I thought the, the food sampling by the commissioner did get out of hand. Yes, he had a trade here following oh, yeah. Harrison. And uh, the senior vice president of operations, Rod Thorne, which means no funny stuff out there on the course tonight. Sergeant of law enforcement for the NBA. And this has been a physical series. Rick Smith's suspended. A couple of objections. Quiet to this point tonight. Bucks up by two. Both clubs having their shooting difficulties in the second quarter. The foul is called on best. Finally, we have some points on the board. They went three minutes and 38 seconds without a score, and Milwaukee is one for its last 13 after once again getting off to the good start. You saw a little cross match that time by Indiana. They had put Travis Best on Ray Allen and put Reggie Miller on the ball against Sam Cassell. So Milwaukee just sent Allen immediately down to the low box, and Best was explained that he's just trying to challenge the shot, and the official had rushed on him. You can challenge, but when your body is crashing into his body, that's a foul. Well, Ray Allen stops an 8-0 run by Indiana. 40-36, Milwaukee. Another cutting 
trying to lose Allen. He did off the screen. Beautifully done. Took him down off the high screen and turned right around and came back off the screen again. Meanwhile, the Bucks come right back. Williams with the bucket and the foul. Scott Williams beating the Pacers on the transition. Well, Indiana makes a basket, and as soon as Miller winds up hitting the jump shot, coming off the screen, comes right back off of Smiths again. And Scott Williams, who's under the basket, if you keep an eye, here's Williams right there, taking off, running down the floor. Dale Davis a little bit behind, ball advanced, quick score. And Scott Williams able to hit the, uh, the free throw. Derek McKee was called for the foul. Thomas on the rebound, and McKee on a return. McKee committing his second. The ball back to the Bucks. Milwaukee was 19 and 22 on the road this season. Their best road record in over a decade. That includes the huge win in Orlando. They were battling out for that final playoff spot. So they've been a pretty decent road club. To sell, and it's Williams. Shot clock running down. Irvin Johnson. Top clock down to one. Oh, Kim Thomas able to hit. Nobody stepping in front of the driving Tim Thomas. He was on the move. I mean, he's not going to pull up the way he was going and shoot a quick jumper. Get over there in front of him. Take the offensive foul. Eight points, seven rebounds for Thomas. And the foul is called on Allen, his second. With the shot clock running down, the ball in the hands of Tim Thomas. There's Smiths, there's Davis. Neither one takes away the driving lane and the conversion for Thomas. Reggie Miller back to the line. He's three for three from the line. A 92% foul shooter. Second to Jeff Hornacek. Jeff Hornacek had one of those seasons at the line where you could actually remember every miss he had. There were so few. Similar to my career. Yes. We're going to get to that a little bit later on. Actually, that'll be doing a sermon in the early morning hours. Two and a half remaining. And this first half, Bucks with a 45-39 lead. Ray Allen firing one up. Irvin Johnson able to keep it alive. Here's Allen with the shot clock running down, getting it off. That's the foul on the Pacers. Irvin Johnson continues to play so well. George Carl had Irvin Johnson with Seattle. Davis called for the foul. And uh, there was a time where... Irvin Johnson was very upset with George Carl. We can understand from Carl's point of view, uh, made the move that he had to. He, he benched him during the finals against the Chicago Bulls. Now, all George does is praise the play of Irvin Johnson. Not a guy who needs shots, but keeps the ball alive, gets rebounds, blocks shots. He said back then he was a young athlete. He said now he, he's a pro. He said he gets so much more respect now from the officials. Early on, he would get you know, silly fouls called on him. And, he said it's just a matter of you know, maturity and understanding and growing as a player. And you can count on him to do the things you needed to do. Rebound, block shots. Derek McKee. So the Bucks now lead 47-41. Delay of game warning. Ball was knocked away by the uh, Pacers to prevent the Bucks from racing down. Well, it's one of the things that Milwaukee had been talking about in previous games, that Indiana gets away with touching the ball or knocking the ball away after they scored. That cuts out the quick pass that we saw Scott Williams get a few moments ago. And deflected out of bounds by Best. Ten on the shot clock, a minute 45 remaining in the first half. Fifth and final game of this first round playoff series. The winner advances to face the Philadelphia 76ers. Allen Strip. And last touch by Allen. And you can see why Larry Bird has put Travis Best on Ray Allen. Allen, Allen quick off the dribble, and Best not going underneath screens. He's getting over the top of screens, cutting down his dribble penetration. That's the way they want to play it with Allen if they can. Ray Allen hit his first three shots. He's missed his last five. Shot clock at five. Best nowhere to go, and somehow found the key. Davis on the putback. And they could not afford to have that layup roll off the front of a nice follow-up by the key. By Davis, rather, I should say, follow-up. 
All right, the Bucks have a 47, 43 lead. Just under one minute left in the first half. And the crowd back to life. Purcell able to recover. Lost it. Closer starts back. Miller. Closer is fouled. An energy burst by the Pacers. Are you going to call that a shot or a pass by Reggie Miller as he was down on the baseline? Look to me, Reggie was trying to draw the foul. He got the shot up off balance as he was landing in the crowd. Too long, over the top. Crozier winds up catching it. Reggie thinks he has contact there, so he fires it at the front of the rim. No call. Too long. Nice save that time by Crozier. Fouls called on Scott Williams. 22nd timeout has been taken by the Bucks. Well, coming up on the AT&T Halftime Report, Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith, Jerry Stackhouse of the Detroit Pistons in the studio once again tonight. And they'll be talking with 76er head coach Larry Brown by a satellite. Sixers with some time off, which I know they appreciate with the uh, injury suffered by Eric Snow. Allen Iverson has been playing hurt. Larry loves it. He can go double sessions right. every day. Loves oh, yes. being out on the floor yeah. teaching, coaching, putting new little wrinkles in. Will it be Larry Brown facing his former team once again? The Indiana Pacers. Pacers swept the Sixers last year in the playoffs. Or will it be Larry and the uh, 76 is going up against George Carl and the Milwaukee Bucks. It's a four-point game. Austin Crozier trying to cut into that Milwaukee lead. Touch. Shooter's touch. Crozier at 85%. Free throw shooter. And with the rebound, 40 seconds left in the hand. The Bucks opened up with outstanding shooting once again and then cooled off. And Ray Allen has uh, gone cold. Foul is called on hand. Both clubs are over the limit. 26 and 9, 10 seconds to go in this first half. And the Pacers back at the line. This time it'll be Derek McKee. And this will be McKee's first attempt from the foul line in the playoffs this far. Eric, a 77% free throw shooter during the regular season. Eddie Del Negro checking back in, replacing Irvin Johnson. George Carl looking for some last second shooting possibilities. Has his four shooters on the floor. Ham, the rebounder, designated rebounder inside. Milwaukee has a two-point lead. The Bucks by one. Better up tight on Purcell. They're on their feet at Consuco Fieldhouse. 15 seconds to the half. Two-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Five on the 24. to go in the half. It'll be Indiana ball. Stay. Miller will throw in. By this intended for close. A nice catch. Here's the shot. Well, the Pacers close with a 7-0-1 the last two minutes. 15 seconds of this first half. And as we Head to the halftime break. It's the Bucks 47 and the Pacers 46. Let's go to Cheryl. Tim, this is truly a heavyweight battle. You consistently have been a huge lift for this team. Yeah, you know, when I get the ball on the way, I just feel as though none of them guys can, you know, guard me. I mean, their feet are very slow, and I just try to take advantage of every opportunity. Miller has 19 points. Any adjustments that you make in the second half? I mean, we just got to play that he missed shots. I mean, you know, he's home. I mean, he's used to this court. So, you know, hopefully we can, you know, contest him with, you know, with a good hand, and hopefully he can miss. Tim, good luck in the second half. Let's go back to you, Mark. All right, thanks, Cheryl. Yes, Tim Thomas has done the job again off the bench. 
8.7 rebounds. The Bucks have hit only three of their last 19 from the field. Coming up, the AT&T Halftime Report with Ernie Johnson. Our Valve with the Czar. Mike Fratello, Milwaukee opened up again with red-hot shooting. However, they have gone cold, one for the last 19 from the field, while Indiana has come on, led by Reggie Miller. They recall prior to Game 3, the game that saw Reggie break out with 34 points, he wore that Superman T-shirt uh, in the warm-ups. Well, he did not do it tonight. However, just moments ago, as he was getting ready for the second half, there it is. The Superman T-shirt is back. Well, perhaps he felt that what he had accomplished in the first half warranted him going back in, whipping out the T-shirt from his locker, and he got himself going tonight by putting the ball on the floor and going to the basket strong early on. Then came on and hit a few of his jump shots and wound up with a 19-point half. On the other end of the floor, Tim Thomas off the bench winds up splitting the double team, and then he, too, shows us a little foot fake, one dribble, and then I can pull up and hit jump shots just like Reggie. Tim Thomas, four for nine, eight points in the first half. The Bucks were 13 of 20 from the field in the first quarter. And you can see what happened in the second quarter. They went cold. The Pacers went colder. Ray Allen, after the good start, ends up 3 for 9 from the field. And as we mentioned, Reggie Miller, 7 for 14 for 19 points. Uh, let's go to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Coach Carl, you got a contribution from everybody that played in the first half. How did you think the first half went? Well, I think in general uh, everything was great until about the last four or five minutes where I thought we lost some offensive composure with some forcing some shots uh, trying to draw fouls rather than just passing the basketball but being up one uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. You know, despite that loss of composure your team has maintained their composure throughout the series. What did you tell them at halftime. Well I think trust the pass is the one thing we got to make a bit a little better reads on Miller and or your, your brother uh, you know he's roaming and doing a good job of getting points. And I just think we just got to keep playing the way we've played the whole series, play with a belief and a trust in each other. Coach, good luck in the second half. Let's go back to you, Mark. All right, Joe, George Carl talking with Cheryl Miller just moments ago. Sam Cassell extends that Milwaukee lead to 49 to 46. Mark Jackson, Reggie Miller in the backcourt. Rick Smith's up front with Dale Davis and Jalen Rose. On the deflection, Robinson is up with it. And Robinson playing with three fouls. Robinson. The Indiana Pacers closed out the second quarter with a lot of energy. This crowd was into it, but uh, once again, things are quiet as the third quarter gets started. That was last touch by Ham. Sending Mark Jackson down in the post. Very familiar there last year in the playoffs. It was a bread and butter play for them, hopefully getting the double team and open up Smith or Miller on the outside. Able to hustle it down as Ham and Davis came together and uh, fouls a call. Double foul. You'll see the power forwards hook up. Watch Davis's arms with Ham both get tied up. The official Ed Rush calls a double foul. So that will lead to a jump ball at center court. Al Davis upset. He felt that. Ham had committed the foul. But the Pacers do control. Jackson backing Cassell. Davis. Davis on the recovery. Pops it out. Miller. Trying to shut off Allen. Here's Jackson. Yes. It's a three from Mark Jackson, who has been very quiet. It's interesting. When the Indiana big men come up with a second shot opportunity, they immediately look to the three-point line. They've scored so many baskets by offensive rebounding and throwing it back out to either Reggie Miller, Rick Smith, or Mark Jackson for a second shot opportunity. Robinson, he's been off. The game is tied at 49. Two minutes gone by in the third. Open shot to Smith. He's had a number of open shot opportunities. Loose ball foul on the box. And that's the play we were talking about before. It was on the left side of the floor. This time in transition, Mark Jackson takes the ball down to the low right box. 
Schmitz immediately goes to the high post area in a straight line. So if his man double teams, he's getting the jumper. If they rotate to Rick, you've got Reggie Miller to his left. Smith pacing on the shot. Miller. Yes. The Pacers with a 51-49 lead. A telling point for the Bucs who were getting the good ball movement in game four. They had only one assist in the second quarter. Well, this team had been, and, and we have a foul call that hold, Joe Crawford making the call. This team has had very high assist numbers. I mean, they've been up over, they've averaged, hey, 16 assists for the last three games at halftime. The fact that they're only at eight this half tells you a little bit of what's going on. Alan Davis is third. Cassell on a quick release. Sam Cassell has tied the game at 51. He has 12 points. Milwaukee with 42 field goals in game four in the victory at home against Indiana. They have 31 assists on those 42 field goals. Foul is called on the Pacers. A loose ball foul. It's on Miller. That's his first. One thing that's deceiving about assists is that when you have a team who can create its own shots, they put the ball on the floor and make baskets that way. And Ray Allen can create. Sam Cassell can create. We saw Tim Thomas create. Brent Robinson can create. So then you don't get an assist. Even though they're shooting well, they're doing it on their own. So that's a particularly high number. Sure, and that's why George Paul mentioned trust the pass. He wants to see some ball movement. Dribble penetration, kick out to Cassell, pass, shot, score. Trust the pass. And Sam Cassell has hit three for three. And the fourth quarter, the Bucks 53. The Pacers, 51. Jalen Rose. He's been very quiet. Six points for Rose. Indiana and Milwaukee tied at 53. Way out of rejected by Carl Davis. Rose changed his mind and turns it over. I, I think all his teammates felt that he was going to go up with that. And the big defensive play by Davis to save the potential hoop inside. Dale Davis with the block, and that gets the paces off running to the other end of the floor. And a defense from the crowd here at the Seco Fieldhouse. Cassell, Sam Cassell catching fire. Now has 16 points. So the Bucks lead by two. In the first quarter with primarily Mark Jackson guarding Cassell. He was two for four from the floor and also had four assists. Travis Best came on and switched off on him when he entered the game to cool down Cassell a little bit. There's Allen. So the two hot men now are Cassell for the Bucks and Rose for the Pacers. Miller from way downtown. Got to draw the foul. Did that uh, little back kick on Ray Allen. And now the foul is called. And Reggie Miller picks it up for the push. That's his second. Bucks with their starting unit on the floor. Robinson. Johnson and Ham on the front line to sell him Allen in the backcourt. And Robinson is struggling. It's saved by Ham. You see, Dale Davis never turned and put a body on Ham. You give him a flying start in front of the rim. He really rises up. Robinson splitting the double team. Big dog Glenn Robinson with eight points. The Bucks recapture the lead. They're up by two. Exciting game. The tie of two. The winner goes on to face the Philadelphia 76ers. Rick Smith ties it to the Pacers. A little curl action that time by Rose. When he curls and the big man helps out, Smith steps back for the jumper. Well, Cassell finally missed the shot and a foul on Smith. Rick Smith with the push out. Timeout has been called. Remaining in this third quarter. They changed the foul. It's not Spitz, it's Miller. That's three on Miller. We'll be right back. We'll go back a few moments ago to show you how a teammate can give himself up to help another teammate out. As Rick Schmitz comes down and sets the screen, Rose will run a curl over the top. 
He gets Smith's defensive player to help out. After the screen, Smith steps back for the open shot. So we're saying that Rose, by curling here, gets Johnson to commit. Smith steps back. Nobody gets there in time on the jumper. It is Milwaukee ball as we resume. The game is tied at 57 with six and a half left in the third quarter. And set the pick. Better try to draw the foul. Pass rescued by Ham. Top block down to five. Here's Allen with a floater. Ham try to keep it alive. Jackson has it knocked away by Ham. Recovered by Miller. Davis is fouled. Held by Cassell. Well, Davis did not like being handcuffed. They recall that uh, Sam Cassell and Dale Davis had some words. A couple of games back, both were ejected, picking up second technical foul, but no damage there as Davis goes to the line. He's one of two at the line. A reminder, tomorrow night here on TNT, a doubleheader beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. In the first game, the Sonics and the Jazz, game five of their series, fifth and deciding game, followed by game five between the Kings and the Lakers from Staples Center in Los Angeles. So two showdown games tomorrow night here on TNT. What a stretch beginning with the Bucks and the Pacers here tonight. Pacers now lead 58 to 57. Well, I know that Indiana has been in a number of big games over the last couple of years, but it seems that they're a little tight the way they're playing tonight. It's almost as if they're saying we're the number one seed and we just can't afford to lose the game. Sam Cassell has given the Bucks a one-point lead. I look at the Pacers, and right from the start, there seemed to be the same lack of energy that Larry Bird has been concerned about. And they recall right before the series got underway, as Davis was able to stop, he was unhappy with the way his team was practicing. And as we mentioned at the start, he lashed out at the Jalen Rose after the loss in game four. Reggie Miller was upset with the play of Rick Smith, upset with the bench. Robinson with the air ball. Pacers appear to be putting something together here, up by one as we approach five minutes remaining in the third quarter. A good no call by Eddie Rush. Mark Jackson fumbled the ball. You can always pick up a fumble pass. He just is not allowed to dribble it again. And Jalen Rose has relocated the cut. Started slowly. Was not in the offense early, but he's come on. He has ten points. Indiana scores this possession. George Carl will take a timeout. Yes, Ray Allen, who had missed nine straight shots. Well, he doesn't have to use that timeout. He got the basket he needed right there to quiet the crowd down. But if they would have missed and Indiana came down and scored, you would have seen the next timeout. Foul committed by Cassell, did not like the call. Steve Javi did not like the reaction from Sam Cassell. You know that Jackson loves to go down into the post. Cassell trying to meet him earlier and trying to get him off the low block area. The foul is called with the body contact by Cassell. Cassell's point is, look, he's trying to establish low post position. I don't have to give it to him. I'm entitled to get there. If he gets there first, then it's his spot. If Jackson gets there first, you can't reroute him and knock him off the spot. Now Travis Best has come off to Mark Jackson. Foul is called. Foul away from the ball. On Irvin Johnson, his second. Bucks with their fourth team foul. Pacers also have four. Smiths. And Rose setting it against Tim Thomas, who just checked in. His best. And knocked out of bounds by Robinson. It's amazing. Dale Davis, just a couple of buckets inside. He's much more active now on the glass, getting his hands on things, sweeping the defensive boards. Rose, yes! Well, Jalen Rose, who was the focal point of criticism from his coach, Larry Bird, is taking over in this third quarter. He's hit his last four shots. Indiana by three. Cassell coming up short. 
It's almost as if Sam Cassell was trying to prove a point. I've got a much taller defender on me. I'm going to show you I still can get it over the top of him and make a shot. He wound up taking a bad shot. Davis trying to shake off Thomas, who was deflected out by Thomas. Turning and going baseline yes. when there is no baseline there. That's a problem. Got clock at 12. Travis Best 0 for 5 from the field. Not able to get going to this point. Best. Getting it going. In the foul. Nice pass from Rick Smith. A great look that time from Smith. The inbound passer that time. Travis Best throw, throws the ball and immediately when he sees his defender turn his head, cuts to the watch the guy pass the ball, cut as soon as his defender turns his head. Pass, the cell looks away for a second. A nice late pass that time by Smith. The Pacers having their best moment since back in game number two. It takes only one jump shot. Get to the middle of the lane off the low post area, and then it starts flowing for you. Jumper after jumper has gone down. A quick eight points here for Jalen Rose to put the Pacers out in front by five. Travis Best at the line looking to complete a three-point play. Beautiful pass from Rick Smith to set it up for the layup for Best. And I'm sure George Paul in that timeout urged his team, you've got to hold on right now. You've got to execute. You cannot let them pull away little by little. The crowd will start to get into it even more. And as we know, when this team starts shooting threes in there, Tim Thomas quiets it down right there. If Indiana starts making threes, you can be in a lot of trouble. What a beautiful spin move by Thomas. He now has 10. Chases by four. Coming up on three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Rose had it knocked away, recovered by Smith with one on the 24. Reggie Miller tried to fire one, but it's a violation. 24 second violation on the Pacers. We'll back about five or six seconds prior to that. It all started out with the mishandling of the pass, and suddenly you're scrambling to try and get a shot up with the 24 second clock running down. Played by Davis. Aces have Best and Miller in the backcourt of those Jalen Rose is handling the ball to set it up for Miller. So Jalen at the point forward. Miller wanted the foul call. Reggie with 23. The Pacers 69. The Bucks 63. That was a nice job of Reggie freeing himself up. That's one of the easiest looks that he's had thus far because he ran a nice cut coming off the screen. Foul is called on Indiana. You've got to work hard down the low post area. Use your big man. And right here, Allen gets caught behind Smith. He was going to follow and go through. Instead, it's way too late when you follow Miller off those screens to give him that much room. Another call for the foul is fourth. Both clubs are over the limit. And the Bucks to the line for the first time this third quarter. Derek McKee checking back in. Austin Crozier has also come on. Big dog Glenn Robinson looking for his 10th point. So the Pacers now lead 69 to 65 with 215 remaining in the third. To sell, pushing it down. Robinson going baseline and pops it out. Oh, Allen in the collision with Smith and the foul on Smith. It's a blocking foul. I'm not sure if he called, did he call that on Smith or did he give it to Best that time? As the recovery takes place right there, Smith seems to be there with his feet set. Best running alongside of him. He did say Best. So it is a Travis Best. Ray Allen, two for two, at the line. Reminder, Saturday on NBC, the 76ers awaiting the winner of tonight's game between the Bucks and the Pacers. Coverage begins 3 o'clock Eastern time with NBA Showtime. That'll be Saturday, the 
Philadelphia 76ers waiting for the winner between Milwaukee and Indiana. Sixers wrapping the series against Charlotte on Monday. Now here's Rose getting the step and foul hammered from behind by Urban Johnson. Johnson not going to give up the layup. Right now you have Jalen Rose playing in the two-guard position, so Indiana goes back to the play. They must have used 15 to 20 times in their big win in Milwaukee in Game 3, a 1-2 side pick and roll. One man, point guard coming from the top, two guards setting the screen, just foul line extended, hoping for the switch, and then trying to play off the mismatch. Alan Rose, originally a first-round draft pick of Denver, spent two years with the Nuggets. This is fourth season with the Pacers. Last year averaged 11 per game. This season, a career year for Jalen. 18 per game, led the Pacers in scoring. Indiana up 71, 67. Vinny Del Negro went down the floor. Del Negro and Allen at the guard. Scott Williams up front now with Tim Thomas, Ben Robinson. Scott Williams lost it, but it was deflected out by Best. Interesting when you come in and get 20 point, points off the bench one game, they get a little more attention paid to you the next time out. Yes, you get the idea that Sam Perkins is taking Scott Williams very seriously from the defensive point of view. Tim Thomas with one on the shot clock. 71 69, Indiana, and another sparkling performance by Thomas. Hitting the outside shot. Now the best. Now one for seven from the field. Allen off the dribble. Sets it up for Williams. And he is front. Scott Williams will go to the foul line. Foul committed by McKee. Indiana Pacers, including the playoffs, with a record of 37 and 6 at home. But two of those losses to Milwaukee and both lopsided. Here's a look at tonight's American Express leaderboard. Reggie Miller, a high point man with 23, and the assist column, Mark Jackson, leading the way with eight. And Dale Davis with eight rebounds. The Bucks. Now 13 of 15 at the foul line. They're within one. Williams is 73% free throw shooter during the regular season. He takes one out of the two. Uh, Perkins had an ocean, but uh, Scott Williams moving up on him. And as if Scott suddenly clicked in and said, wait a minute, it's Perkins. He shoots threes. I better get out there. This time he got it off. Half minute left in the third quarter for the Bucks. Able to hang in. Indiana with that 13-4 run. Put some daylight there between themselves and the Bucks, but Milwaukee has come right back. Shot clock is down to five. Allen. Ham had a knocked that way and uh, knocked out of bounds with one on the 24. Nine and five, ten seconds to go in the third quarter. You're looking for some kind of back pick here or fake the back pick and a quick screen catch. It has to be a catch shot quickly here from Milwaukee. All right, here's the catch and the shot. Rebounded by Rose. Checks the clock. Has to hurry. Final seconds. Press. Does he get it off in time? No, says Steve Jones. As it turned out, did not matter because he did not hit. And that is the end of the third. So, the season on the line as we head to the fourth quarter here at Conceco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. The Pacers clinging to a one-point lead. The winner advances to the second round. Fast break. Milwaukee out there with 11. Indiana picking up finally some points in transition. This game shooting basically even. And because Indiana has come on and made some shots here now, you can see that they have 20 assists, which is a good number. And again, advantage to bench Milwaukee. All right, there is the president of the Milwaukee Bucks, Herb Paul, a state senator in Wisconsin. 15th season as president, owner. 
of the Milwaukee Bucks. Fourth quarter is underway. Scott Williams. Well, Scott still has the touch. Has not had as many opportunities tonight as you mentioned earlier. They are respecting the outside shot. Bucks have taken a one-point lead. But again, that was Tim Thomas creating a shot for his teammate by beating his defender off the dribble from the top of the circle. Ball deflected out by Darvin Hand. Milwaukee Bucks went 42 and 40 in the regular season. And there's Ernie Brunfeld, general manager of the Bucks. They finished in the number eight seed. They went through that down period, but bounced back, finished strong on the last three, 11 of the last 15 games. Adam Rose coming up with air, and it's a 24 second violation of the basket. Will not count. And the Bucks, one of the surprise teams in this first round of the playoffs. Unbelievable that on two occasions, in game two and then in game four, they led the Pacers by as many as 31 points. 31 points against the number one seed. Uh, Indiana, in the top spot of the East, at 56 and 26 during the season. Ray Allen drills the three, and the Bucks are up 75 71. That was a really a nice play that time by Milwaukee. The railroad pick and roll just to suck in the offside defender wound up getting out of the shot by screening in on the weak side. Perkins for three. Allen pops it down to hand. And he wisely pulls it back. Bucks continue to play with such poise. They're in the midst of a 12-2 run. A minute and a half gone by in the fourth. Del Negro. Hand with the rebound. And tied up by Crozier. If you don't put a body on hand, he gets a running start. He just goes over the top of everybody. And somehow comes up with the ball, and he's so strong, he pulls it away from you in the end. Darvin Ham is uh, one of the outstanding leapers in the NBA. To take part of the uh, slam dunk contest All-Star Weekend back in 1997. Best off the tip. Best takes the distance. Well, you want to form a cup to two of your players together and tip the ball in between your two teammates. That time, the ball was tipped a little bit too deep. Best guess right winds up with the layup. Scott Williams lost the dribble. Thomas on the recovery, backs it up. Shot clock at three, out of two, and a foul. committed by McKee. That is his fourth. And a timeout has been called with 9.52 remaining of the fourth. Well, similar to what the Milwaukee Bucks are trying to do, the Sacramento Kings looking to become only the third or perhaps fourth, depending on how the Bucks make out tonight. Number eight seed to upset a number one seed since the playoffs expanded to 16 teams back in 1984. As you saw Denver did it to Seattle and George Carl back in 94. And the Knicks beat the Heat last year on that uh, last second rim shot by Allen Houston. Both doing it on the road in a fifth game. And since the timeout that George Carl took a while ago when Indiana was up, they have come back, great composure, executed, got their defensive stops, rebounded the basketball, and then in large part, thanks to this gentleman, Tim Thomas, has come back here now to take the lead. So Tim Thomas with 14 points off the bench. The Bucks lead by four. We are early fourth quarter. Rose being played by Thomas. And Rose forced it up, thought he was fouled. And he switched hands, made it a difficult shot there, trying to draw the foul. Nothing's there. Kick it out to a teammate spotting up opposite. You know, this crowd is sitting here as if they're saying we want somebody to get us excited. And the team is kind of hoping that they help get the team excited with their enthusiasm. And Cassell called for time as he was trapped along the baseline. A 22nd timeout has been called by the Bucks. 9-18 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Milwaukee up 77 to 73. 
And from George Carl's point of view, this is exactly what he was looking for tonight. On the road, fifth and deciding game. See uh, the numbers on George Carl when facing elimination. But wanted his team to come out with a sense of looseness, a bit confident. And for a team that, that struggled for a good portion of the regular season, going up against the number one seed, it's, it's remarkable what they have accomplished. Well, as you mentioned to us today, I have to find a way, he said, of getting this team to believe that they can honestly do it. He said, I think that going into the series, we felt that we didn't have enough weapons to play against this Indiana team. But after the last game and the performance that we've had, I honestly believe we have enough weapons to beat this team. I've got to get them to believe it. Ham with the uncontested rebound and slam. As George told us earlier, he was going to tell his team, I now feel that you're good enough to beat the Pacers. He did not feel that way prior to the start of the series. 79-73, Milwaukee. To Salem Del Negro in the backcourt. Oh, bad pass. Still plenty of time left with eight and a half minutes, but Larry Bird's going to be facing a decision here. Do I stay with what's my better defensive team, or do I come back and put Smith back on the floor again and look to score points? Offense. Remember, with Dale Davis and Smith in there, and they took the lead. Rookie Miller for three to bring the Pacers within one. Thomas. Tim Thomas. 16 for Thomas. Thomas has answered every time he, they needed something to happen. He's either hit the shot, got to the foul line, or picked it off to a teammate for a score. Miller, met by the double. In and out, it was there. Nice ball reversal. Watch them start the double team, and here comes Scott Williams in transition, running the floor hard. I was just starting to say, watch Milwaukee go start the double team. No, it's one of the things George Paul told us. If he gets going, we're going to get the ball out of his hand. And a good luck from Cassell. Robinson and Allen getting shot to check back in. Miller for three. Deanna with a new 24. Hesitant, not shooting well, takes it off the dribble. The Q with the rebound. The Bucks 83 and the Pacers 80. As we come up on seven minutes remaining in the four. Williams setting the pick and a foul. It was pushed by Perkins. Timeout has been called 6.57 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's the Bucks with a three-point advantage. I'll, I'll let you know that at 10 o'clock. <laughs> but hopefully, uh, time in and time out, of course, we're, you know everyone talks about the experience and the veteran leadership on this ball club. Um, we're not panicking. We're looking forward to it. We don't know what's going on in the other locker room, but this is going to be a fun game for us tonight. This is a team that's been in the Eastern Conference Finals three out of the last four years, just haven't been able to take that next step. And here they are in another situation where they can move on, advance to the second round, or it will be a very early exit, a very disappointing ending to a very good season. The Bucks with an 83-80 lead on the Pacers. Just under seven remaining in the fourth quarter. Comes best. Miller and Best in the backcourt. Davis McKee and Rose up front. It counts in the foul. Reggie Miller really asserting himself right now. He got himself going with the three pointers. Now he sees the drive to the baseline, feels he had contact, so elevates right there. Not only gets the basket, gets the opportunity coming up to go to the foul line. 
on the baseline. Williams rotating over, but Reggie just gets it up over the top of Williams' hand before he can block the challenger. Reggie, four for five from the line, trying to tie it. The Bucks and Pacers at 83. 31 for Reggie Miller. He's 12 for 21 from the field. Six and a half left in the fourth quarter. Robinson swept. Best has Miller. Here's Miller fouled by Purcell. And the question, as Reggie Miller was looking to Joe Crawford, looking for a flagrant. Uh, Joe, Joe, Joe Crawford makes the right call here. Sam Cassell is not trying to hurt or take down Reggie right there. He just doesn't want him to hold him up. He doesn't want him to go crashing into the stanchion. He just doesn't want to have to take a real hard foul and knock him down. So he grabs him, gives him the two free throws. Good call. Well, good no call if we want to look right. at it. So Reggie Miller hearing it from the crowd. They're in the chance of Reggie shooting two. Let's go to show. Well, Marvin, Mike, this afternoon, Reggie got a welcome message from a very good friend. Charles Barkley called the PR department and wanted to leave this message for Reggie. He said, Reggie, do not let your team lose. And Reggie is giving it his all, guys, in the second half. So well, obviously, Cheryl's still on speaking terms with Reggie after the little problem they had earlier. And Reggie Miller has given the Pacers a two-point lead. He scored 10 of the last 12 for Indiana. Robinson struck, recovered by Allen. Two out of one. Miller pulls it up. Rebounded by Allen. That's one of those opportunity situations. Reggie really wanted to drill that one. The crowd would have went off. Purcell was fouled. Sam Purcell took the block. Hit by Best. Indiana with their third team foul. Of course, an outstanding defense by Derek McKee. And McKee is, is on Thomas right now, and that's the guy that George Paul has been trying to go to. He has kept the ball out of his hands. As a result, Robinson has wound up with it the last two times. Each time going to the basket, he's been stripped by the Indiana defender, and it's given Indiana an opportunity at the offensive end. So the game is tied. 85. 5.45. Remaining on the fourth. There's your switch. No one with the size advantage. They go double right away. Now you just have to pass the ball and find open shooter. Miller with the shot clock running down goes Glass. Indiana by two. 35 for Reggie Miller. Allen, the play by the key to alter that shot. Ray Allen right back to tie it at 87. 18 points for Allen. Hustle play by Allen. First shot no good. The strength of best that time gave him the advantage for us to miss, but the hustle play by Allen got it back again. Miller posting on Casella went down, and Miller hits again. They are going to the same play each time, and there's no reason not to. If the play's working, you get what you want it in, you stay with it. We're seeing vintage Reggie Miller. He scored 14 of the Pacers last 18. Johnson with the rebound, puts on the floor, and draws the foul. Very unusual to see Urban Johnson try to take it to the basket, but he saw the opportunity. The foul was committed by Davis. Johnson just a 60% free throw shooter. Well, tomorrow night here on TNT, it's a doubleheader beginning 8 o'clock Eastern time as the playoff excitement continues. First game, Sonics and the Jazz in game five of their series. That's a final game followed by a fifth and deciding game between the Sacramento Kings and the Los Angeles Lakers from L.A. Bucks and Pacers tied at 89. Four and a half to go on the fourth. Best. And Travis Best continues to have his problems. Two for ten from the field. First option was Best beating his man Cassell off the dribble. Reggie gave him about seven or eight seconds to see if he could do it. Then Reggie came over, set the screen, got the switch. Best just couldn't hit the jump shot.
Thompson was trying to post up. Good job by Rose fronting. Here's Allen. Nice play by Best to knock it away. Best has done a very good job in the series of getting his hand in on Ray Allen, stripping the ball around the waist area as Allen tries to bring it up. But Allen is really quick on that first step of the dribble. Timeout is taken by the Bucks. Four minutes, 11 seconds to go in the fourth. The game tied at 89. Brown playoff series. We're going down to the final minutes. The Indiana Pacers, led by Reggie Miller, who has 37. That's two off his playoff career high in that magical night against the Knicks at the Garden. He scored 39. Well, when he starts his, hitting his jump shots, it gets him going. Then he drives and gets fouled, but has the opportunity and does convert the three-point play. And then leaning in, contact but no call, but still the conversion. I want to go back, more to game number three when Miller scored 34 points. If you remember. Scoring 34, he was just 4 for 15 from the three-point line. He said after that game, if I make my threes, I score 50 in this game. And back in 94 at the Garden when he had 25 of the fourth quarter, finished with 39 for the game. And Reggie has taken over. He has scored 14 of the Pacers' last 16 points. It's another classic Reggie Miller playoff performance. Four remaining on the shot clock. 6 left in the fourth. Robinson beating Rose off the dribble. Uh, Robinson was going so hard that time that he needed a little bit of touch on it. Instead, he bangs it so hard off the glass, he misses the chicken. And Robinson is just 4 for 16 from the field. Rose posting on Robinson. Shot clock at 6. Rose coming up with the air ball. Pacers and Bucks tied at 89. Robinson had it knocked away by Rose. And the foul on Jalen Rose. That is his third. Pacers are over the foul limit. So Glenn Robinson will shoot two. He's two for two at the line. an 80% foul shooter. The Bucks 19 for 22 at the line. Milwaukee has a one-point lead. Interestingly, up until that last shot, Indiana had gone to best or Miller, Best or Miller. They put it in Rose's hands, come up with an air ball. Now right back to Travis Best. How is the jump shot from the outside? Best struggle right now, shooting the basketball. Just two for 11, Travis Best from the floor. Now Cassell goes to work on Miller, gets the screen. Cassell, yes! Sam Cassell, who has been a big game player. We recall his heroics as a member of the Houston Rockets, a member of the two championship teams for the Rockets. His first year as a rookie. Best is open for three. Davis on the rebound, and a loose ball foul. It's against the Pacers with 2.46 to go in this fourth quarter. It will be Milwaukee ball, and uh, now apparently the indication is that it was deflected out of bounds. No foul call. Now, Travis Best has had wide open looks at the basket. He's 2 for 12 right now. And you say, well, where's Mark Jackson? Should they bring Jackson back? The difference is they want Best for his defense out there to stop the dribble penetration and hope that he can make one of these open looks that he's getting. Well, these are anxious moments for the number one seed, Indiana Pacers at home, trailing the Bucks, trying to take the series in five. A three-point Milwaukee lead to sell. And a offensive foul. He was pushing out. Yeah, you can see that excellent call that time. McKee switching on to Cassell. McKee, one of those rare athletes that can defend against a point guard, a two guard, a three guard, a power forward. Watch the right arm of Cassell right there. Push off McKee to clear space to get the jumper. And for Sam Cassell, that is number six. A major loss for the Bucks. 22 points, six assists, just one turnover.
When Cassell was ejected from the game along with Dale Davis at that point in the game, that was game number three. Their offense fell apart from that point on. Indiana went on to victory. For the point guard was Ray Allen. Indiana in possession. Down by three. 220 remaining. And the four. Thomas guarding Miller goes right by him. A block by Johnson. And a foul. This is a tough guard for Tim Thomas. He knows it. Miller knows he's going to go past him. But now here comes Johnson over to protect the front of the rim. As they go up, it looks from that angle like it's all ball right here. A good block by Johnson. If anything, it will be the left hand on his hip, but that really had no effect on the fact that he got up there and got ball cleanly. The Milwaukee bench jumping on that call, and Reggie Miller, a superb free throw shooter, has missed his second foul shot of the night. He's 7 of 9 from the line. Bucks 92, Pacers 90, 38 for Miller. Thomas handling against Bello. Allen played by Best. Head on the shot clock. Just under two minutes remaining in the fourth. Here's Thomas. Rebound snatched by Davis. Well, Thomas got what he wanted. He knows he has the size advantage. Just wants to turn and shoot over the top of Miller. Matchup. Thomas defending on Miller. They clear it out. Reggie for three. Yes! <laughs> 41. A playoff career high for Miller. Pacers up by one. Here's Allen. Rebound Davis. Oh, Ray Allen made a great move. Elevated up over the top, had a wide open look at the front of the rim and just couldn't make the short shot. One ten to go in this fourth quarter. Miller working on hand. And it will be Milwaukee ball. Reggie lost the dribble. But Reggie can't ask for any more. First he's got Thomas guarding him for three straight plays. Then Ham goes out and guards him instead of Thomas. Reggie in his mind is saying, I can go past either one of them to get a look at the basket. Timeout taken. We're down to 105 remaining of the four. Five remaining in the fourth quarter. Pacers lead by one. The story for Indiana. Superman himself put the uh, Superman T-shirt on prior to the uh, start of play of the second half, and he has scored 22 of his 41 in the second half, 18 coming in the fourth quarter. Well, it's Reggie putting the pressure on himself. He was going to be the one that was going to carry this team on. He knew that they were lacking in energy. The people have been sitting here waiting for something to happen. He gave them something. Under a minute remaining of the fourth. Sam Cassell is fouled out. Ray Allen operating as the point guard. Gets it to Pitt Thomas. Oh, a huge shot by Thomas in the Bucks lead by one. Yeah, and Derek McKee is upset because he had to go and stay with the ball a little bit longer than he wanted to. It never gave him a chance to recover to Tim Thomas. Indiana has three timeouts and a 20. Milwaukee with two. Bucks have a foul to give. Seven on the shot clock. Best. The tip by Davis. The key trying to keep it alive. Last touch by the box. 29 and 4 10 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And timeout is called by Indiana. The Bucks by one. There's a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So when we come back, it will be Indiana ball, and they will have the full possession. Fighting game down to 29 and 4 tenths seconds to go on the fourth. Milwaukee by one. The Bucks do have a foul to give. It will be Indiana ball. Let's look quick at a couple of things they might do. One is to let Reggie Miller come up, set the screen after they get it in bounds, and have the point guard come off, roll Reggie into the post. The other, send Miller off a series of baseline screens. We know he likes to shoot from deep in the corner. And Reggie Miller will inbound. Best gets it up immediately. Kept alive, Miller. Well, 
is silent. Here's Best again. Yes! So the Pacers have taken the lead. Travis Best from downtown from deep in the corner. Indiana by two with 16 and five. Ten seconds to go in the fourth. Well, you talk about believing in yourself. This young man was two for 14 from the floor. I'm not sure that the inbounds play was drawn up for him to take it, but he took the first one, missed it, goes two for 14, and then finally hits his third field goal, the big one here from the corner. But it will be Milwaukee ball with 16 and 5 tenths seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. The Pacers with a two-point lead. It's a game that has seen 13 ties, 19 lead changes. Sam Cassell has fouled out. And now the Bucks are drawing up a play. And now who do you go to? Big Dog Robinson right there to try and get your basket at the end. Do you go to Allen, who's been exploding and going by his man? Or do you go to Tim Thomas, who just hit a big hoop for the Bucks at the other end of the floor after they ran a high pick and roll? Big decision for George Carl. The Pacers are over the foul limit. Now look at the uh, timeouts left. Milwaukee has one full timeout. Indiana with two and a 20. Indiana on a 6-2 run since Sam Cassell fouled out. And the story for the Pacers, Reggie Miller, a playoff career high of 41, turning it on in the fourth quarter. You've got Glenn Robinson just four for 16 from the floor right now. You've got Ray Allen six for 19, obviously under 33%. The guy that's doing it for you has been Tim Thomas, eight for 16 from the floor up to this point. Vinny Del Negro, excellent shooter, inbounding the ball, so you have to pay attention to him after he inbounds it. Vinny Del Negro, who just cut in. Looking to throw in, gets it into Allen. The Bucks put the ball down by two. Down to 10 seconds. Allen off the dribble. Allen took the shot. Johnson had the rebound up the way, and we get a whistle. A foul against the Pacers, which will put Milwaukee at the line. Indiana over the limits, number five on Davis. Allen turns the corner. The next defender, Davis, comes over, challenges. Allen tries to draw it by throwing the elbow, and it's there on the arm that Dale Davis is called for. Urban Johnson, four for four from the line, only a 60% free throw shooter. Six and two tenths seconds remaining in the fourth. The Pacers maintaining a two-point lead. George Carl talking to his players over at the sideline. And George Carl has just told his team, miss this next free throw. That's what Glenn Robinson is telling his teammate up front. He wants him to miss it. You've got to block out. The guards on the outside have to block out. You've got to watch Tim Thomas flying in from the top of the circle. We'll see who has block out responsibility. Miller on Thomas, best on Robinson. Milwaukee also has a timeout left. Let's see how Urban Johnson plays it while well, he hit it. So it's a one-point game. Now Miller for best. Milwaukee can't find anybody to foul. Now the foul is given. Reggie Miller had to be fouled immediately on the inbounds pass. First of all, George Paul when Johnson made the foul shot, you saw him shake his head because he had just told his team to tell him to miss the free throw. Then on the inbounds pass, it doesn't matter that Reggie's a 90% free throw shooter. You've got to foul him. Plus, he has missed two today. The clock is going one and four ten seconds. Let's see if they reset it. That was the foul to give. So the next foul will put the Bucks over the limit. Even more of a reason why you had a foul immediately is you could get to the point of taking the next foul and have a chance to get the ball back. Big thing, do not pass the ball back to the half court line. Pass it forward. So if they do it the second, they can't get the quick steal and shot. There it is forward, and Rose is fouled, and now he will go to the line. The clock did not move. It still shows one and four ten seconds. 
And Jalen Rose will shoot two. He's four for four from the line and a very fine free throw shooter. 83%. Pacers have a one point lead. Well, they, they had reset the clock to two seconds when that play started, so that's where the six tenths of a second was taken off. So it's now back to 1.4. Jalen Rose now looking to hit. What does he miss on purpose? You, you take a chance. Well, he missed, and Allen calls for time at nine tenths of a second remaining. And we'll stay right here. So Irvin Johnson missed one of two, and Jalen Rose with a chance to increase to a three-point lead, and a good free-throw shooter misses on both. The Bucks take a final timeout, and there's certainly time to get a shot off with one and one-tenth second remaining. Well, let's look at a couple of the options that George Carl has. With 1.1 seconds remaining, you do have time to catch and shoot. So we'll assume that the basketball is advanced to half court. Someone will take it out. And you're looking at a couple things. You might get some type of back pick here, send the guy to the rim for a lob, or you still have plenty of time to screen and send the shooter to the corner to catch, turn, and shoot. I'll give you one more option. I'm going to take it out on the other side of the floor here. Watch for this type of move, a screen, and a player curling off this way, you must lead him with the pass out in front so he can catch and shoot all in one motion. There's plenty of time to catch and shoot. Jalen Rose missing two crucial free throws. Preceded by a, a bizarre situation, Irvin Johnson missed the first, and as you mentioned, George Carl had passed on the word telling Johnson to miss the second, and he hit it. A decision for Larry Bird, do you put a man up on the basketball to pressure the passer? Maybe put a big guy in the game, Rick Smith, up on the basketball to distort his look, or do you back him off? Last time Vinny Del Negro took it in, Reggie Miller backed off Vinny Del Negro and took away the option pass to the top of the circle. We'll see how Indiana plays it this time. Bucks do not have any timeouts left. One and one-tenth second remaining. Fifth and deciding game. The winner will go on to the second round to face the Philadelphia 76ers. Reggie Miller providing the room. Del Negro inbounded. Here's Allen. Can he get it off? He does. It is... The Indiana Pacers defeat the Milwaukee Bucks 96 to 95 to win the fifth and deciding game. Reggie Miller coming up with a spectacular performance. A playoff career high of 41 points. A great series. Both teams so well prepared, so well coached. Both teams making big plays and big shots, momentum swings in the entire series. And then Indiana coming back home here, that makes them 20 and 0 in bounce back games against teams that they have lost to in the previous meeting. They have answered it 20 straight times with a win. So it will be Indiana and Philadelphia with game one here at Conseco Fieldhouse of the best of seven on Saturday afternoon on NBC. All right, let's go to Cheryl with Brother Reggie. Reggie, I know you're absolutely, absolutely exhausted. This has to be the toughest first round playoff series that you've ever been in. That we won, yes. Right now, you got to give Milwaukee all the credit in the world. We might have won the series, but they were the better team. They really outdicked us and outfought us for five games. We're fortunate to be moving on. George Carl really had his team prepared. I think experience won out tonight, but it shows what a younger team can do. But we had the heart and the determination, and our experience really rose to the occasion, which was great. Reggie, in the second half, you came out of warm-ups wearing the Superman T-shirt, and you gave a superhuman performance in the second half. It was actually the whole game. Well, I knew it was do or die. You know, I knew I was going to try to put up as many shots as possible, be aggressive, 
And shots were falling for me tonight. Travis and Mark and Jalen did a great job of setting me up and getting me great shots. But, man, we're lucky, Cheryl. We're very lucky right now. Reggie, what do you take from this series headed into the, into the second round against Philadelphia? Well, A, our fans can be just as loud as everyone else that's still in the playoffs. And, B, we got to protect our home court. We got to play much better and play like we played tonight with a sense of desperation. To tell you the truth, we were thinking that we could sweep Milwaukee or, or beat them in four. And you can't do that in playoff basketball. We got to look at Philadelphia as a very dangerous, dangerous team, which they are. And we got to protect our home court. Reggie, congratulations. Great performance. Let's go back to Marv and Mike. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. Reggie averaged 32 points in the three Indiana wins. The 41 points is a new Pacer playoff high. And uh, keep in mind, in last year's finale for the Pacers against the Knicks, Reggie only 3 of 18 for 8 points, 1 for 8 from downtown. So this one has to feel mighty good. Obviously a tremendous game by Reggie Miller. But let's look at it from Milwaukee's side of things. Very similar to what happened the other night to Minnesota. All of a sudden, they hit that point in the game where they couldn't make shots anymore. And Portland comes on to win it. And shooting 49% over the last three games coming into this one, starting out well again. They wind up at 43% for the game. They shot 47 for the season as a team. And now the Indiana Pacers go up against the Philadelphia 76ers for what it's worth. They split the season series at, at two and two, and it gets underway here in Indianapolis on Saturday afternoon. Well, they won't see the same type of shooting team, but a better defensive unit in Philadelphia. So again, the final score, the Pacers squeak it out 96-95 over the Bucks to take the series in five. For Cheryl Miller, Mike Fratello, I'm Mark of Albert from Indianapolis will have reaction from the Milwaukee Bucks coming up. Also a look ahead to the uh, Twin Bill tomorrow. A couple of game fives on tap on TNT. It's all coming up next with Ernie along with Kenny Smith and Jerry Stackhouse. Inside the NBA is next. That's a shot and uh, we kept going to him. Um, you know, I don't know if you can get any better than that. He had bank shots. He had three-pointers. Um, he just kept us in it. I thought Jalen in the third quarter kept us in it. Then down the stretch, uh, Reggie made all the, the shots. Then um, when we needed a big basket, Travis finally hit the big one. And, uh, you know, it's just it was great. Great playoff basketball. <clears throat> Coach, could you uh, talk about the sixth foul on Cassell, whether you thought it was a good call, and also the impact it had on the Bucks with him out? Well, obviously, they, they lose something uh, when they take uh, Cassell out of the game, uh, especially fouling out. Um, you know, at that time, they were up. And uh, the one thing about Sam, he's been in playoffs before. He knows where the ball should go. And he can get a shot for himself about any time he wants. So that was a big plus for us. Um, you know, it was. Glad to see him go out, but uh, the way that game was going, it, it was just a well-played game. I thought both teams tried as hard as they could. Uh, we did a lot of good things, and they did a lot of good things. We was very fortunate to get to win. Coach, uh, Travis had missed some shots there right toward the end of the game. Could you just talk about the uh, guy's confidence in going ahead and taking that, that big shot? Yeah, it was, it was great to see. You know, Travis um, struggled a little bit from outside, but the one thing about it is with Jalen and Reggie in there, if they do drive the basket, Travis is going to be the one open. So he's got to keep taking them. So if he does come down to the last couple minutes of the game, he's probably going to be open, especially the way Reggie was hitting shots. I thought when he drove, if he could kick it out and we got ball swings, uh, we would have had a good look at the basket. Okay. All right, Larry Bird at Conseco Fieldhouse. And before we had to go to that, I got to tell the guys, you know, it's no more wins for us no more. We're growing up as a team, you know, and it should hurt. Um, you know, Reggie played an outstanding game tonight. Um, he had to step up, you know, and he did. But we still had enough fire to withstand what he did on the basketball court because tonight it was a one-man gang by him tonight. Um, he did it inside, outside. He did what he had to do to let that team move on to the next round. But our guys played extremely hard, and, you know, Travis didn't make a shot all night and made a big three. <laughs> but that's how the game of basketball goes sometimes. But discourage, not at all. This team is not that far. We need, you know, we add a piece here, add a piece there. You know, keep our core unit together. Um, I know for a fact that we'll move on further next year. 
Wow, what a night. Uh... Barkley. For three! Unbelievable! He's not human. Ball club that averaged 17 and a half during the regular season. Barkley. And the foul as Houston got him. Charles went for 56 that night. Ties him for third all-time in playoff history behind Michael's 63 and Elgin Baylor's 61. If you're just joining us here on TNT, it is over. The Indiana Pacers are through to the Eastern Conference semifinals, defeating George Carl's Milwaukee Bucks 96-95. George Carl live now at Conseco Fieldhouse. George, what you have to say to the team uh, after you came off the court in the locker room after the game? Um, you know, I'm just... <clears throat> For the last six weeks, we've been just a really good basketball team, and I'm proud of them. Tonight, we played a, a hell of a basketball game and, you know, just didn't rebound the ball in the last few minutes. Or we might have been a lot happier, but... Uh, I thought it was going to be a fourth quarter game. It was a fourth quarter game. And uh, they made, you know, they re the rebounds, if we made, we would rebound the ball, kind of like last year in the second game. And, you know, Davis got a couple of rebounds. <clears throat> Most of the series, we've controlled the rebounding pretty well. But in the last minute, that hurt us. George, uh, how were they able to run so much time off the clock after Irvin made the second of two free throws? I just think Timmy just didn't realize that we had a foul to take. We needed to foul quickly, and he was probably reading Reggie. Uh, the building was hot, live, and we couldn't probably verbally get enough information to him. Next. George, the, uh, the effects of losing Sam there, can you speak to that? <laughs> Well, you know, it was a very physically rough game, and then to be lose him on that type of touch foul, and, you know, they were letting you go at each other, and then to lose, lose our best offensive player probably on the court, other than he and Timmy were playing very well offensively, was difficult. And similar in game three when we lost him, we didn't have a great deal of composure, even though I thought we did play well down the stretch. Um, but that's, you know, he's the guy that has the ball, and you take him out of the game, it was a difficult, difficult thing for us to adjust to. Talk a little bit about the switch, uh, putting uh, Miller on Sam and then putting Travis Best on Ray Allen, if it frustrated Ray. Yeah, you know, they, Travis, they, they wanted to bump and body him, I think, a little bit more than Reggie can, and um, Ray never got a good rhythm going. Um, even though I thought he got fouled a lot on a lot of his penetrations. Um, but that's something he's got to learn, you know. Playoff basketball, fifth games, there there are not a lot of fouls called. And and we didn't get a lot of fouls tonight. And, and you know, we just got to learn how to make more shots and maybe be a little more persistent with passing the basketball. Did Reggie Miller... Not say surprise, but did you do think he was capable of doing what he's done to the last three games at this point in his career? <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, he's a, he's a great player, and they were running their screen game really well, and uh, he had his rhythm. Um, he he's a classy pro, and he showed it tonight, and showed it you know, why he's one of the best players in the game of basketball. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Coach. You're welcome.